All right, folks. Uh, we are at another recent slide that happened this past winter. <clears throat> we are in the um, Raging River Block. Highway 18 is right over there. We came in the Karistan Gate at the bottom of Tiger Mountain. Uh, we've been in here before. Um, up above, um, looking at the uh, uh, the Karistan sale and also looking at um, the Matchstick sale and some of the roads around there with compacted glacial till. This is about the same elevation right now to where uh, that Matchstick sale is. Uh, however, this, this landslide here <clears throat> was caused more by an old road bed and more particularly at the top, which we'll get to here in a little while, um, where um, another road, there was an old landing and a road at the very top of this slide basically exacerbated the slide. Um, so again, logging roads uh, can um, exacerbate landslides. They can, uh, um, as we saw over on Tiger Mountain, the road failure actually kind of helped uh, create a slide that went down and blocked a culvert, um, uh, nearly causing another road failure or culvert failure there. And so, again, my point being, uh, you know, logging roads oftentimes cause more issues with um, landslides and erosion and things like that than um, the actual logging itself. So there is a culvert here that isn't quite blocked by this slide. This stream isn't really involved with this slide, believe it or not. There's another stream that's now the road basically has become a stream, but that's where the main part of the slide is. We did have some outwash material, some alluvial material come in here from around here. Um, and it started to try and block this culvert, but didn't quite make it. And you see all this, these old logs here, some new, there's a fresh log there that's that just been ripped out of the ground. These old logs here were either part of what was in the roadbed. A lot of times um, road builders back in the day would use um, some downed wood and stuff called, they call it pungent. And that could, um, they would use that kind of as part of the ballast or the subgrade, which eh, works for a while, but it does kind of rot out. It's not the best practice. It's all right for temporary roads and things like that, but um, long-term roads, not a good idea because that will eventually rot and um, you'll be left with, <coughs> excuse me, um, some rotten wood below your road. You get a dip, you get potholes, and that's how those kind of things arise. Uh, this, I would say it's probably the largest uh, landslide that I've seen um, on our land since I've been working here for the past eight years. Um, this past winter, like I've been talking about, was one of the worst, wettest winters, um, you know, kind of in history here. We're seeing weather change. Um, uh, you know, based on climate change, we're seeing flashier storms. We're seeing, uh, rather than the kind of misty rain that we, we used to get, that we were used to getting. You can see this uh, chunk of an old growth um, log that was either left, it, as again, part of the road, or it was part of maybe the old landing that was at the top of this of this failure here um that's a huge 
mountain of wood that's just been moved. You can see there's 10 feet of logging debris here. There's more than that, 15 feet of logging debris, or not logging debris, but there's trees, logs, um, over there. And so this road used to uh, go uh, right up there, basically. I, I mean, it still, it still exists in a certain state, but it uh, is no longer a drivable road. It is now a creek bed. And this material, these large one foot plus rocks, you can see some nice fresh deer tracks here and some elk from a while ago tracks. And um, it's just amazing to kind of imagine what this must have sounded like and it probably even rumbled what it felt like, you know, it probably rumbled the ground even. Um, but it was definitely loud and <clears throat> probably sounded similar to a freight train coming down the, uh, the old road here, uh, which is now, like I said, a stream. Uh, so I'm gonna walk up here to where the road, this used to be what we call kind of a shoe fly, where the road split and uh, that way you can come up this hill. This, this road was kind of a little steeper than most roads too. Um, although below our 16% kind of adverse uh, maximum or, or probably pushing that, but um, this, this part of the road went out that way, the way we came in, and then the road continues on. In fact, there's a, a brand new bridge that we put in just past this. And, um, but now we can't get to it. We won't be able to get to it for a while. Um, this will take quite a bit of time to, uh, to clean up but kind of where that pile of debris is down there is where the road went off in that direction. Uh, over here, you can see a uh, culvert from the old road. That is no longer really functioning. It's been filled in over there. Uh, there's just a huge, massive pile of debris, trees, and, uh, and stuff from, um, you know, logs from the old landing. A culvert here. You know, this area has obviously been washed out. And you can see a good example of what the road prism used to look like well, or what it looks like, even though now it's a stream, this is a really cool and a cut in the road here. Um, as you can imagine, there was probably a lot of water pouring over this as it was then now cutting down and going in that direction. But originally when this slid, it was just coming in all kinds of different directions. Um, and uh, so we got this kind of eroded away here and washed out, but you can see here besides the, the cobbles on top now, we have our surfacing material in here. There's, you know, a good six, four to eight inches of that. And then we have this material underneath that's four plus, maybe even eight inch material, four to eight inch material here for another good six to eight inches and then we get into look at this compact glacial till which we run into all over the place especially in the raging and on tiger mountain and this is basically our subgrade uh material which it makes for really good subgrade because it's already compacted you don't really have to roll it to compact it 
but um, you know if you can imagine getting some water in uh, you know especially a, a lot of water at once it may cause some issues uh, with with erosion and 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 little landslides or landslides on a smaller scale but this is kind of why we use this material here because it's well drained rather than just putting this material which is gravelier and sandier on top of this material then you would have more problems with erosion and landslide or you know the surface material sliding off so we have a nice compacted material then we have a bigger rock that allows for drainage and um, then we have this uh, gravelly material on top of that and that seems to uh, set things up better for um, you know it's basically it's you know following the principles of water uh, and how water works and especially like I've been talking about water and the different materials you know you you want something like this coarser material on top of a compacted material so we are going to go uh walk this and go see if we can find the top and uh i might stop a little bit on the way and talk a little more if i see something interesting but uh this whole thing is uh, is fairly interesting to me at least uh there's a lot going on here that's re-emphasizing how uh important it is to manage water, manage landings, um, and manage our roads um, when we're doing logging and, and managing the whole entire land, the whole watershed.